share your enthusiasm game devs. Tony Chan here, and welcome to episode 84 of Game Dev Loadout, where I chat with the best people in the industry every Wednesday morning. If you need motivation and tactics for a successful gaming career, then this is the podcast for you. Now let's chat with today's future guest, Dan Schoenbaum. Dan, it is a game time. Are you ready? I absolutely am. Thanks for having me. Appreciate that. Yes, he is the CEO of Akula Data, which specializes in helping clients understand customers' journey from discovery and conversions to retention and growth. Essentially, they analyze a customer behavior analytics to help you figure out what your audience is doing with your game and how you can optimize it. So, uh, but first, go ahead and give us a bit about your personal life, Dan, and how you got started in the game industry. Sure, absolutely. Um, well, you know, I a little bit about my background. I um, um, have been in software for 22 years, and I've been in all facets of software, enterprise, security, different areas, and life is short, and I believe you've got to do what you love. And growing up, I just, I love games. Um, they challenged me, they developed me, they helped me grow, they stimulated my mind. And when I met the founders of Kula Data, just I thought they were doing something really interesting. I thought, you know, helping to understand user behavior and think of it as almost like an online psychologist. What makes people buy? What makes them do what they do? I thought if you combine that with a space that's really hot, really growing, and you know, gaming is a two hundred billion dollar market. If you bring those two together, I just thought that'd be a job that I'd love to get up and, and do every day. And so um, that's that's what um, that's a little bit of background and, and how um, not only did I get into analytics, but I focused directly on the gaming space. Yeah, and it's crazy how I guess it's getting more scientific with, with the games. I, I don't know what's the word for it. Like we're using more science to determine a uh, player's behavior and, you know, what, what gets them excited about games like gamification as well. Uh, what is your current main area of expertise at the moment? Like break it down for us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, two things. Um, w- one area of expertise, so we already said we focus on behavioral analytics. To understand your user's behavior, game playing, gamification, you know, h- how effective they are, um, you have to go beyond traditional approaches. So there are lots of products out there. On the low end, people use Google Analytics. A lot of talk about products like uh, Mixpanel. Those just focus, those aren't bad products, by the way, nothing against them, but they just focus on web and mobile. And there's so much more beyond that. Um, So in gaming, you have, you know, what influences your player? Was it an ad on Facebook? Was it a Google AdWord? Was it another game? You know, what affiliate brought them in? Um, And then once they join, there's lots of data that's behind the scenes. Uh, Revenue data, chatting with uh, customer success, There's information on um, intercom. Sometimes people chat, social media. All that information is valuable, and it tells you something about your customer and what it's like to interact with your game. So what we do is we bring all that information together, and we provide analysis to help you understand it. Um, I talk to a lot of gaming companies who either can't seem to hire or can't afford a data scientist. Data scientists are in hot demand and so we have a team of data scientists who actually work with you. They help you understand your data and make sense of it so you can deliver a better game and a better application ultimately to your customers. Yeah, and I honestly never heard of a, a, da- a data scientist for a gaming company before. And to me, it, it makes sense because the data is really important. Like if you know how your customers react and do this and that, it makes it easier for you to market or, you know, create a specific ad that just targets the right audience. And so uh, what is something we probably don't know about in trying to understand our, the player's behavior that we should? Uh, good question. So, and by the way, um, so you commented on data scientists. So data scientists are becoming more and more common in gaming companies you typically found them only in very large companies that can afford uh, uh, a data scientist. But more and more, we are seeing them in startups, earlier stage companies. And it's either a data analyst or it's a data scientist. And their role is really to wrangle all of the data and help you make sense of it. Um, 
so I just wanted to clarify that. So um, touch on your question again, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, can I, real quick. So how do we become a data scientist? Like, what's, what's the criteria to become one, especially if you want to become a data scientist for the game industry? Uh, good question. So it's uh, interestingly, you know, there, there are lots of titles, developer, marketer. You can sort of learn how to become one on your own. But data science is something that's actually very specific. It's a master's degree. There are um, high-end programs where, you know, you can become an accredited data scientist. We know that that's a hard thing to do. Um, so, I, you know, I recognize there are actually lots of courses online where you can learn things about data science and how to better interpret data. Um, but I think one of the reasons we exist uh, is we recognize that not every company has a data scientist. And if they have one, they're usually extremely burdened with a lot of work. And so what we provide is, think of us as data science as a service. Uh, it's the technology that gathers all of your inf- in- interesting data, and we help you interpret that. Uh, we may interpret it by building an algorithm to predict when somebody is going to convert to paid, uh, or even just showing the most common paths people take before they purchase. Um, so we help analyze that data and help you understand how to better monetize your game and deliver a better experience. Wow, yeah, that's a very interesting role. So, yeah, earlier I asked, what is something we probably don't know about in trying to understand a player's behavior that we should? Sure. Um, I, I think when I talk to, so I talk to companies every day, and I actually find that there are many things that are not well understood. And m- many of the companies we talk to gather what are very basic metrics number of users, they, they gather more, um, uh, you know, ver- very standard, what I'll call analytics, what platform people are on, what version of the browser, what's their, um, I'm sure your users know a lot of these terms, their dwell time, um, time to first deposit. So those are very standard metrics. Um, but what a lot of people don't understand are <clears throat> what influences people to uh, convert what are the top five things people do before they leave your game and never come back again? Um, you know, what, what uh, marketing campaigns have the best retention? Those are very sophisticated things. Those are things that you can't easily understand unless you're gathering large amounts of data. And if you don't use a solution like ours, usually you have to build a whole data warehouse and write big, complex SQL queries and not a lot of... Um, our customers, and I'm sure your listeners have the time or the um, the budget to do that, and so that's why we try to help them find that information, which you know is is there, but it's just very hard to interpret and understand without the right team and the right technology to to uncover that information. Oh yeah, uh, like in terms of data, I'm a market researcher myself in the oil and gas industry, which involves yep. a ton of different types of things, uh, data that. Uh, you know, our clients look for, and it is a lot to keep track of. So definitely having someone on it would ease up the load or just help a lot in general and the business as well. Um, and you had video game clients before. What were the most common mistakes that you noticed aside from, you know, not being like specific on the data they were seeking? Uh, um, I would actually say one of the most common things I see is companies who launch a game and, either rush to get it out because it's a very competitive market, as we all know, and either don't properly tag and build analytics or they just don't have the data. Um, you know, we recently, I met somebody, um, don't really need to say the name of the company, but they're one of the, one of the top five companies in, in gaming, <clears throat> in web and mobile gaming. Um, not yet a customer of ours, but that's how the conversation started. One of their top games, they, they had no, no visibility into it. The logging data was hard to interpret. Um, they didn't understand what the logging data was, and game was on fire, and they wanted to make sure that they continued that growth trajectory, but really didn't have the means to understand the data, make sense of it, and to properly leverage it. And so uh, I see that often. It's um, either not being able to interpret the data or just having too much of it, Um we recently wrote a, a white paper on what's the best SaaS dashboard you should have, and it's actually one of the most popular pieces of collateral. It's kind of an ebook that we released because 
I find that people don't really know which metric is the most por- important thing to look at. And so uh, I, I find that all the time. It's staring at a wall of data and not really knowing what are the two or three things that are most critical for you to understand to um, improve your business. What was that ebook uh, called again? So um, I can send you a link, but um, the ebook is um, on what is the the metrics you need to track uh, in your SaaS dashboard. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, link that up for Game Dust. And w- so, how early should we start, you know, collecting data, and how late would it be to collect data? Like, would it be like too late to cl- start collecting data if the game's already released? Like, give us like a time period of how early should we do it, or how late can it be done? So I don't think it's ever too late. You can always start collecting it. Um, you can actually, a lot of our customers, by the way, just have terabytes and terabytes of log files that are sitting there. And it's very common for us to take those log files, load them into our um, data warehouse where we can start to actually give you a view into the past. So it's it's common that we have customers who uh, are sitting on uh, a gold mine of information, and we help to unlock that and help you make sense out of it. Um, so it's, um, I think it's never too late to start. Um, and in terms of when you should start, this is this may be controversial or it may be counterintuitive, but I actually think the time to start tracking and monitoring data is before you launch the game. So if you have something else out there, even if you have a website about a game that's coming. Start to track that information. Who's attracted to your game? Who's looking at it? Who's l- chatting about it on social media? Or who are the people who frequented your previous game? If they're fans of yours, I'm going to bet they're going to be fans of your new game. So you're going to want to tap into that captive audience. So uh, I think the earlier the better. And if you haven't started, it's never too late is my the summary of my answer to you. Yeah, and that makes complete sense. So, uh, keeping players engaged, you know, that that's vital for us game developers, but it can be extremely hard. What can we do to keep players engaged? From the data that you see, how do we keep players engaged? Um, I, my advice uh, to do that is um, constant change. All right. I, I mean, I think there are really two things that I see when I look at user activation and user retention. It's the companies who either are really, really good at adding gamification uh, or really, really good at constant change. Um, I think coming in to see what a daily uh, promotion is, see what you know coins are available to you each day um, brings people in again and again. And um, it's that anticipation uh, that drives the psychology of users. And if people, um, are looking for coins or points or some sort of, um, chest that they have to open, it's amazing how effective that is. I see games that have it that have, you know, double the activation and retention level over games that don't have it. Wow. Yeah. Challenges, daily challenges or rewards, and I, I see my, especially my wife, she goes back and play games again and again just to get, just to collect coins and stuff. <laughs> so that's definitely a, a effective. And updates as well. Like I, there's a game called Warframe and I heard that it's extremely successful because it constantly updates itself all the time to just, like you say, changes and changes to, uh, reward the players or, or make the game better for the players. And so uh, another challenge is to get gamers to buy the game or to purchase in-app items or even sign up for like an email list. Can you dive deeper into how discovering players path will lead to a, a conversion? Sure, absolutely. So um, as I mentioned earlier, our focus is on studying user behavior. So what, you know, take take your top spending users, right? Maybe your top 10% of the people in your game. Uh, what we, an example of what we do is we will go back and look at their historical behavior. What are the things that they did before they bought? So we literally track their path. Think of it almost like footsteps through the application or, you know, leaving breadcrumbs that you can track. So we will show you visually what people do before they buy. And so you may want to pat, you may want to chart out what are the paths that users took before they bought and maybe left, right? They bought once and never returned. And how do those vary from users who bought and became high-paying customers, you know, um, 
uh, you know, who really had high deposit values or just, you know, very high LTV. So um, studying that is key to understanding how you need to change your app, how you can better develop it, what you need to do to send more users down that path. So um, I use the term rough edges. So if your game has rough edges, they're screens or things that people encounter that make them go away. Um, you're going to want to understand those and you're going to want to understand the paths that lead to a purchase or a conversion and optimize around that. Um, and unless you have a deep understanding of that, you're flying blind when you're trying to optimize your game and improve it. Would you have to have a, a demo of it, of what you're talking about online? Cause I'm really curious to see like how detailed or specific can you get with the step by step of, you know, players path. Would there happen to be a demo on your website? We don't. Uh, good question. If you go to our homepage, uh, which is www.kuladata, c o o l a d a t a dot com, there's a quick minute and a half video on the homepage. If you go to the gaming page, there are actually some screenshots of uh, users and how we map out their paths. And then we like to show what we do and talk to interesting people like you. So if any of your listeners want to see a demo or we actually like people to come to us with the challenge, I have a problem retaining my users. I have a problem converting on this area. And we love to give a demo or we don't just show you a product. We show you how we would solve that problem. So if people are interested, they can definitely sign up for a demo online and um, happy to show um, how we would solve any specific problems you may be encountering. Awesome. Yeah, I would definitely link that up. And earlier you mentioned LTV. Like, can you touch upon LTV? What exactly is it? And why should we uh, target high LTV players? Sure. So LTV is a um, pretty standard term that's used in marketing and also very important with game development. Um, but LTV stands for lifetime value. And the lifetime value is essentially um, how, you know, it looks at a customer and how long they spend and what their duration is. So if somebody comes in and spends very little money and then they churn out, they stop coming to your game in uh, a month, that's going to be low LTV. High LTV is somebody who's a high spender who stays on for months or years. And people talk about two things. They talk about LTV, but they also, you can't talk about LTV without talking about CAC, which is your cost of acquisition. So cost of acquisition is how much are you spending to get somebody to sign up for your game? And those two figures need to be proportionate. So you can't spend $500 a user, meaning $500 CAC, and then have an LTV of $100. That's not a sustainable business, right? You're spending more than you're making back. So it's really important to focus on LTV. And what we do is we help you find the users with the high LTV and we help you figure out where they came from so you can spend the right amount of money and have a low cost of acquisition to bring them on board. So it's really about optimizing your spending and your campaigns to find the best users at the lowest cost. And if your users in developing a game are looking for investment, that's the first thing investors want to know. What's your cost of acquisition? How well can you retain people? And the companies that are really good at that are the most successful and they have no problem raising money. Yeah, I feel like you're like you're actually giving us business lessons right now, Dan. <laughs> because <laughs> it, it is important to learn the business aspect of the game cuts. We, you know, game does. We can't spend all of our time make a game and not make any money off of it. We got to put these things in in motion early in the game, such as marketing and uh, gathering data on our audience. And so, this is something we definitely need to study and research upon. What are bad recommendations do you hear in your profession that's usually given out to game devs that you, you know, it's just like, oh, that, that's not a good idea or that's just not right? Good question. So specific to gaming, I'd say I, I see a lot of companies that overdevelop or put too much budget into something that's not tested, not proven. And, you know, that's just not it's not efficient to, you know, I know a lot of companies out there that are larger that maybe will develop 10 or 15 games in a year, and they hope one will stick. Um, and I don't think that's uh, a very good approach. You're, you're guessing or you're praying that you're going to be successful. I believe in taking a much more of a market-driven approach where you gather data, 
you have information, you know uh, what you do some testing, by the way, with users, and you figure out what's a hole in the market, what's an uh, opportunity you can go after with your game, something that nobody else is doing, or a different spin on something that's old. So bad advice is, you know, people who um, build blindly and hope that something will be successful. So there's a saying in business, hope is not a strategy. So don't don't hope that your game's going to be successful. Really try to be metric and, and um, metric-driven, understand your users, and build something that you know will be uh, effective and uh, will hit the mark. And I, by the way, I always believe in getting con- uh, constant feedback. I talk to as many of our customers as possible on a regular basis. I have personal relationships with them. I don't see a lot of that in gaming, by the way. And I think the more you can survey or ask people their levels of satisfaction, the, the smarter you are. Um, and, you know, and so bad advice is not doing those things. I love that. Do not hope. Make sure you're ensuring your success. I love that. I encourage my listeners to study marketing trends. So I, I really do try to make them research. Should we be doing something else in general to make sure we're, we're a success? I, you know, I like to study personally. I, I like to study companies who are successful, but I also like to study failure. And I think you learn more from failure than you do from success. So there are lots of good case studies out there. There are lots of good things on SlideShare. There are lots of webinars about things that worked. Look at those, but always learn from fellow entrepreneurs, fellow game developers, or you know sites that talk about things that didn't work. Um, don't make those same mistakes yourself. Um, I, you know, I'm I've been a CEO for um, almost ten years, and I learn every day, every second. I never stop learning, and I think. That's one of the reasons I got to where I am, and I encourage people who are entrepreneurs or game developers to go down that path, uh, constantly learn. You can always get better, and the more you do that, the I think the more effective you're going to be at what you do. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Learn from your failures. Uh, can, can you give us an example of how you would take a company from start to finish using the game analytics? So say like you know, a company just starting and making their first game. Uh, well, what is this like a step-by-step of them using your game analytics, you know, to, to make that game for a specific audience or something. Sure. Well, I would, as I said, start early, even if you do some market testing or you just have a website. And and by the way, this can be very far in advance of your game. Um, very easy just to even put up a landing page, announcing a new game, looking for beta testers, Getting, getting input or market research on that landing page. You can build one in five minutes in HubSpot or, you know, any other, um, system. Start to drive people to it, build SEO and start measuring. You don't, you don't have to use Kula data at that level, by the way. You could, but just start measuring who's attracted to it, what keywords are working for you. Learn as much as you can early. Um, so that's a great way to start. And then once you start building the game, um, I strongly and firmly believe in A-B testing. Try to test out different screens, different user interfaces, different approaches, different strategies of your game, which has better results, which has better user retention, where do people spend more time. Um, if you know that, it, that's strategic and competitive information that's just going to help you build a game that's that much more effective and that much better. So again, I guess start early and use that information to help you determine what you need to do and where you need to spend your time and effort. Definitely. So the A-B testing, I have this problem. I get really impatient when I don't see results. <laughs> How long should we wait when we uh, you know, do like a landing page or do like an ad? How long should we wait until we try to make a change or update it? That's a great question. Um, and there's no one answer because it depends solely on the amount of volume you have. So if you have 100 people a day coming to your website, that's probably not going to yield data that's statistically significant. If you have a higher volume of data, it's going to, um, you're going to start to see trends. Um, so I guess I would say to you, you know, you, you will know when it's time, either when the data is very obvious, you know, 99 to one in one direction versus the other. That's something that's blatantly obvious. You don't need to wait. If it's not blatantly obvious, I think you're going to want to 
make sure you get to a point where the data is statistically significant. You have enough users in where it's not uh, a blip or uh, a data point. It's actually a real trend. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So what do you think we the biggest waste of time that we might be doing, actually? So you mentioned that don't develop don't develop blindly. So what are, what are other big mistakes that we might be wasting our time on? Well, <laughs> that's a tough question. I think um, I see a lot of companies who develop games on many, many different platforms. This has nothing to do with my business, but uh, I see the results of it. It's that companies develop games on so many different platforms that none of them are that compelling. Um, I think it's, you know, focus on one thing, do it really well, build up demand. So let's just say you designed it on Android and you have a backlog of people demanding that you have your game on, you know, on, on, on iOS platform or on a desktop. Um, so I think focus on doing one thing, do it really well, and then expand after you've built up that demand. Um, I see companies who try to develop on too many platforms in parallel and they end up being suboptimal on everything. Yeah, it, it's tough. Like I, so my first game, I was planning to do it for Android, uh, PS4 or like the consoles as well. And developing for other platforms, it's a different process. And so it took time away. And so yeah, focus on one, uh, type of console or, or app or whatever you want to call it and, and work on that. Yeah. What is the most important stat we should be looking at and optimizing? Is, is LTV the most important stat? I, I think LTV is important. Unless you're just in this for the fun and not for the money, LTV is really important. But again, the cost to acquire that customer is also very important. LTV is meaningless without understanding how much you paid to acquire them. (laughs) Um, But the other data that I think is important is dwell time and retention. How much time are people spending in the game? How, you know, are they, are they sticking around? What's your retention? Because retention is, one of the hardest things in gaming. Um, and if you understand that, you monitor that. And if your attention goes down, starts to change, you know, figure out why really quickly um, before you lose your audience. So there are lots of different ways that you can survey your customers, your users, your gamers. Um, if there's a way to easily work that into your game, um, that's really useful information. So there's a, a a term, it's not used as much in gaming, but it's um, basically your net promoter score. How happy are your customers? So very simple things to do. Hey, how much do you like this game on a scale of 1 to 10? So start to survey those users and understand how happy they are and what they like about your game and what they don't. And if they score you below 5, ask them to send you one sentence. Why not? Um, and if you don't have that information, you know... I, I, I don't know how you're ever going to deliver a better experience. And so I, I think that's more than one um, thing to track, but I think those are the most important things to track. So dwelling and retention. And I'm really curious at your thoughts. Why do you think game industries don't do more user testing? Um, I think it's a time to market issue. I think it's a budget issue. Maybe, um, I, you know, I don't know this for a fact, but sometimes my sense is overconfidence. We are really successful on one game. We know what our customers want. We're going to innovate and come out with something new. And so uh, that's that's just a personal belief I have. I don't have factual data to support that, but that's just something I believe. Uh, I, I honestly believe that too. Yeah, some companies get too confident, and, and that sometimes uh, goes against them. I, I kind of want to touch back on the old game that could benefit from game analytics. And so this is probably like a, a, you know, a real simple answer, but... When a game, an old game, uses game analytics, should they use the analytics to make a new game, or should they take the time to update the old game? Why wouldn't you do both? Um, I, I like to think big. If the old game is still doing well, I would figure out, you know, what can you learn from that? Why is it doing well? And also, can you make it better, right? Um, think of how many movies came out, did well, and then had a sequel, and then they had three or four versions, and they're basically, what are they doing? They're taking something that was old, and they're just slightly changing it and adding to it. And so if you could do that for a film, why can't you do that for a game? So I think if you can take an old game and continue it and build on that brand, you should. 
But if you can also use that data to go build something else, that's also valuable as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, you could go either way. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, some of our listeners, they're indies. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming most of my uh, listeners are indies, actually. So how would they take advantage of this data when their user base might be really small or they just don't have a big budget? How, how would they take advantage of this? Our product, uh, I'm not here, by the way, just to sell my product. I'm here to educate people. So I, I would encourage you to gather data. Um, you know, you can do it using a product like ours, but, you know, our product starts at $1,500 a month. Not everybody wants to pay that. There are lots of other solutions out there that you don't even have to pay for. Google Analytics is, um, you know, an industry standard. It's much more limited. Um, but if you're not gathering data, start to start to do data analysis on a constant, ongoing basis. And Google Analytics is a great way to get started. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, WordPress plugins where you can use Google Analytics. So Definitely start measuring stuff, uh, game does. Awesome. The show isn't over yet. Before we can go into the lightning round, if you enjoyed the episode and want to hear more inspiring stories, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Overcast. So Dan, I will ask you quick questions and you'll be giving us more awesome, valuable data in return. Are you ready to crush it and release the show? Absolutely. And just to keep it interesting, I didn't look at any of these questions. So on the uh, lightning round, I thought I'd make it more interesting by hearing them and answering them for the first time. Ooh, you're take, taking a risk, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here we go. Uh, we hear this all the time that there's a, a saturation in the game market. Should people be afraid to join the game industry or because of you know the importance of game analytics, it's probably easier to target and optimize towards the right people. Like, would game analytics actually persuade people that, hey, this we we got stuff that could help us market to the right people, so we should join the game industry. But but there's a saturation right now. So there's saturation in every market. There's saturation in the analytics space. There's saturation in gaming. You can look at every market in the world, and almost all of them, if they're not saturated or crowded, I would never let that stop me. If you're innovative and you can find something that nobody else is doing, that's how markets get disrupted. So if what you propose to do is something that nobody else has done or you think it's a unique spin, um, don't let saturation stop you. Um, if my company and my team felt that way, we would never be alive today. And um, we, you know, we, we didn't let it stop us and we found something that nobody else was doing and we're doing great. Yes, do not let nothing stop you. Yeah, it, I, I hate hearing that excuse that the market is saturated. It, it just if your product is good, people will will pay for it. What's the best piece of advice you want to give us, uh, game developers? I think it's show no limitations to your creativity. Some of the games that I think are most successful, most compelling, they're doing things that I never would have thought of, and I'm I'm a really I think I'm a really creative person. But I just think if you're not creative, find a partner that is. And, you know, the, I, I just think creativity is the helps pave a pathway to success. I think it also requires a lot of hard work and um, tenacity. But I think, you know, creativity goes a long way in that space. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me ask you this. What game are you most excited about right now? I'm a fan of Clash Royale, believe it or not. So I don't know how that's viewed among your base, but... Um, I like it, and I'm a fan of it. I don't know. I'm sort of addicted to it. But <laughs> by the way, from a gaming perspective, when we talk to gaming companies, um, this may be different for your audience, but we look at gaming very broadly. On um, uh, the Internet, there are mobile and web games, but there are also social games, which you see a lot on Facebook. A big part of our business, by the way, are actually casino and gambling games. So they're not typically based in the U.S., but there are lots of of offshore games where you could play poker or you could play roulette it's almost like going to vegas but you're doing it online and since they're not in the u.s which is highly regulated you can do it legally online so um anyway my point is so when we think of gaming gaming is really really broad for our company and we talk to lots of different gaming companies so at the moment that would be my favorite game but i'm i'm not a big gambler but i'm really interested in the fact that i can take games that you would play in Vegas and go play them online. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's insane how broad games can be now. And now it, it includes like real money and, and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it's crazy. Um, What personal value do you seek to bring 
to representing gaming clients? I mean, to me, I'm, I'm a curious person. And the value I try to instill and bring to customers is curiosity. Never stop learning. Always ask questions. If you don't know something, um, don't walk away from it. Figure it out or find somebody who can help you figure it out. So uh, I think we try to inspire our customers to be curious and do what-if scenarios, try to get information, try to learn, constantly optimize. And I think that curiosity is really important if you want to be successful. Well, not just in gaming, but just, you know, to be an entrepreneur in general. What resources could we use to, to learn more? Game analytics, uh, of course, your, we could go to your, your website to learn more, but like, is there other books in general or uh, case studies or other websites that we could use to learn more about game analytics and how it could help us? So there are articles on, there's a website called Medium, um, M-E-D-I-U-M, where people publish a lot of good content, uh, myself included. We actually have two really good, three very good eBooks, which are not about how great our technology is. They're actually just designed to educate people. One is on, uh, one is called Keep Them Coming, how you bring people back to your game and increase your retention. The other is on the 19 metrics you need to track. And the other is what is the best SaaS dashboard. So um, after this session, I can send you the links to them. They're also available on our website, but those are, uh, I hear from our customers, extremely valuable and a great way to go learn. Oh yeah. I really, really appreciate that. You sent me that. Okay. Yeah. I I want to give our listeners as much data as possible so they could just understand how important this is. Now this next question, I'm going to challenge you a bit. So it's a bit of a doozy. So here, here we go. Imagine you woke up the next morning in a brand new world and you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have today, but now instead of of making game analytics, you you want to create your own game, but you know how the game analytics work. So your food and shelter is taken care of and you have a laptop. What would you do step by step on the path to join and become successful in the game industry? I understand. Uh, Interesting question. Well, I think most people, by the way, would probably spend a day or two thinking about it and then they would spend all of their time developing something. Um, I would flip that around, and I would spend much more time. And by the way, analytics don't have to be online. They can be talking to people. So I'd go to a conference uh, or a show, or I'd you know, give a $10 Starbucks gift card, if you have the budget, to 100 people, and go talk to them about an idea you have, go do some market research, go figure out, what, it, what are some low-hanging fruit or areas where you can build or develop a game or even riff on an old game and come out with something that's new? Um, so I think the time, I'd, I'd put time into doing the market research and analysis, and then I would spend actually less time developing it because I'd be developing something that I knew would hit the mark. Um, so doing that research up front, gathering information, putting it into, putting your efforts uh, your knowledge into what you're building. Uh, and then, of course, have analytics along the way to make sure your assumptions are correct and monitor and understand how people are using your game or not. Whoa, Dan, did that. That was an awesome step by step. Are you creating your own game right now? I'm, I'm just curious right now. <laughs> I think I'm going to after that question. Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. I like the way you said everything. You, it sounded like you like got it all planned out straight. It, it wow. That, that was awesome. Thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, sure. Yes, uh, we have reached the end. Go ahead and give us uh, one last parting piece of guidance and how we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Parting guidance is, um, you know, I think life is short. Make sure if you're doing something, you're doing something you love. And if you're already in gaming, I think you're you're doing something fun and exciting, and hopefully you're entertaining people. And that's, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, because um, doing analytics on healthcare or on, you know, business sales to me sounds very boring. And if I can combine gaming and analytics, to me, that's excitement. So in terms of getting in touch with me, my email is very simple. It's dan at kuladata.com. And that's C-O-O-L-A-D-A-T-A. I'd love to hear from people if they have any questions or even just want to see our product. I'm also a serial entrepreneur. So if you have an idea, you're trying to raise funding, I, I love to hear from people and I'd be happy to be a sounding board for any of your listeners as well. Awesome. Game does take him up on that offer. And 
everything he just talked about, especially with data, is so important for success. So definitely start learning and researching about it. Dan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. For that, we are truly grateful and we will catch you in next time. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, Game Devs, I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to the podcast. Don't forget, you can check out GameDevLoadout.com and type in the number 84 in the search bar to find Dan's episode for all the awesome show notes where you can connect with him and the resources that we mentioned. Until then, go take action. I'm Tony Chan, and i catch you next Wednesday on the Game Dev Loadout podcast. Peace.